so welcome to the Twitch special version of the my, my presentation here called WebSockets with Curl. It's actually with blah, 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 WebSockets with libcurl because I'm going to focus to the, uh, on the lib library version, the API approach, how to do WebSockets f in your application really uh, using libcurl. So I have this little presentation. I did it yesterday. It's slightly tweaked today because I found some flaws when I did it yesterday. So let's get on with this. Uh, there are people in the chat here that you don't see that in the stream and you don't hear them. But if they have questions, I can get to them while talking about it. So yes, I am Daniel. I work for Wolf SSL. I do curl full time all day. I am Bagger and I'm at Mastodon. That's my site. Um, I Today I'm going to try to talk about WebSocket with curl or or um, in libcurl and I, these are the sort of some of the sections I, I, I want to go through. Some short brief words about WebSocket, the protocol, the fundamentals, how it actually works a little bit, how you enable it to curl because it's experimental, you have to, you might need to build curl yourself. We introduce a few new API calls in, in order to support WebSockets because of how it works. And there are two different models how to use these new APIs and how to do WebSockets with libcurl. One is download oriented and one is more session oriented and I'll get to how they work. And I will show you with two small examples how, how to do this. And the examples already exist in the libcurl repository. You can view them on the website if you want to. So I'm just going to sort of point out how they work and the differences between them and the mindset behind them and some words about the future of WebSockets in libcurl uh, or I should probably say possible future because I mean who knows what the future has right but here some ideas and the ideas depend on what you think and what you use and what you will what you lack and sort of and a feedback of course from users what is working what is not working and how we need to massage things to improve them going forward. So WebSocket as the protocol is a uh, first of course the the thing that you, you probably already noticed that I'm sort of mixing WebSocket and WebSockets when I talk about this and it's really confusing uh, but the protocol is called WebSocket in RFC 6455 uh, well one, over 10 years old now but the, the protocol is actually without the s so it's a singular form but a lot of people usually or often talk about web sockets in plural so you will hear me mix that because i can't really make up my mind or de decide exactly when to use what so i'm going to use both you i i'm sure you can figure it out so web socket is a protocol for doing tcp like communication over http and with this i mean that it's designed for for applications uh, running um, sort of that are already using http to get a session like a communication protocol so that you can send arbitrary data in either direction to the other side like you do with tcp Although WebSockets is not stream-based, it's actually message-based. So you send messages in both directions to the other side, but the, the messages can be anything. They're not limited in, in a particular way. You send binary data, you can set, send text data, and the protocol doesn't decide what that data is. It could be anything you decide. So it's a matter of, it's, a, it's like it's setting up a TCP server and client, right? So what do you send over that TCP connection? We don't know anything. And it's the same thing with WebSockets. You can pretty much decide what you want to send. You can make a chat client, you can send the notifications, you can do anything because that com you set up a communication, um, well, connection really, and you send data back and forth whenever you want to. So you set up a WebSocket, you, you initiate a, well, a transfer session or, or a communication with a pair from curl's point of view to the server by using these ws colon slash slash or wss colon slash slash urls those url schemes right ws and wss the the one with two s is the wss the second one i guess stands for secure or something but because that is the https version and the one with just ws that's the one without tls it's just the plain clear text http approach because it is as i said it's over http and 
in our particular case, we're talking about here WebSockets today with libcurl. Curl only supports WebSocket over HTTP 1 for now, it says here within parentheses, because uh, this is how WebSocket started, how it worked for, for a number of years be before you could do it over H2. But it also means that this is the, by far, it seems to be the most popular way to do it. So we have started out this way in, in, in libcurl and this is how we support it for now. That's of course a possible future extension to make sure that we can do it over H2 as well. But I'll, I'll get to that later. So WebSocket is of course a bit different th than other protocols when it comes to curl because it's not a straight download upload protocol like most others are in in libcurl, right? You, ju you don't just download a huge thing or upload a huge thing, but you have these sessions that so you back and forth much more uh, and um, in a different way. So it's never been a perfect fit for, for curl really, but it's been requested a lot by a lot of users of curl for a very long time. We have this question in the annual user survey, what features would you like? Would you like to see these? And, and, and people have selected WebSockets at a very high rate for many years before we implemented this. And uh, I think it's going to be uh, well used going forward, I think, I hope. And a lot of users are already using WebSockets on top of libcurl, sort of glued on top, uh, usually then using libcurl with connect only to sort of set up the connection and then take that over and use a WebSocket library to do the WebSocket communication. And since I, we, I have sensed that this is a very common use case. It, it will simplify for a lot of users to, to stop having to do this rather ugly gluing things on top of libcurl, but just have libcurl do this and by that make things simpler and easier for a large audience of, of um, WebSocket users. So in libcurl then, we introduced the support for this uh, well, it landed in the in the first release that ships with WebSocket it was 7.86.0, October last year, but it's uh, experimental. So it's, it is being changed all over time as everything, of course, will fix bugs and everything. But in this case, we also mark it experimental, which means that we sometimes also adjust the API or the ABI because we reserve that right when we mark them as experimental that maybe we will change them before we make sort of remove that label and that's the freedom we have and we want to use to make sure that once we go non-experimental we know that it's decent and and pretty good for everyone to use so that we once we ship it and we can stick to that behavior for a very long time without you know getting sad and upset uh, upset. So therefore it is still marked experimental and by that I mean also that it's not enabled by default so if you just build curl with default settings with whatever build environment you use it will not be included so you need to explicitly enable it when you build it so if you just install it from your Linux distribution or something it will not be there it will not be provided you will won't be able to use it. So you probably need to enable it. If you build with a configure way of building stuff, you just use configure and you add this dash dash enable WebSockets to the command line and wham, you enable WebSockets in your build. Still experimental, still discouraged from using in this in production. Uh, we reserve the right to change it before we remove the experimental tag, as I said. And it also sort of means implied, of course, that we need your feedback. Tell us what works, what doesn't work. Uh, let's improve it, let's make it really good so that once we remove the label, hopefully not too far into the future, everyone will be happy and we can do a lot of WebSockets with libcurl going forward. So WebSocket is a protocol, I told you that we do that over HTTP, so it's it's a request, that it's an HTTP request that is up, upgraded to WebSocket. And what does that mean? It's, it literally means an upgrade header is sent. So we basically set up a URL with these schemes and under the hood that means an HTTP or HTTPS request that contains a special header called, well, upgrade it's WebSocket. Basically asks the server, here's, here's a request, please upgrade this request into a WebSocket com connection. And if the server agrees, it will respond with a one-on-one uh, switching. 
so that I, okay well let's go websocket and then from that moment on we speak websocket and if it denies it it says i don't know what you're talking about or you don't have the rights or whatever it will send something else to the 101 possibly or 40 something and then of course in in libcurse case you will get an error back because if you ask for websocket and it doesn't uh, return a, a 101 switching it's an error so we, you will get an error otherwise you will get a success so once you have that WebSocket connection enabled, you can speak WebSockets. And what does it mean for, for libcurl? For libcurl, we support WebSockets then using, we provide a few, a few new API calls to make sure that you can do, speak WebSocket after you've done that sort of dance to now we speak WebSocket, what happens then? We provide three fundamental functions, pretty straightforward ones. One is called curl WS receive or receive you know, receive data, web socket data. I, I figured pretty sort of, it speaks for itself. And surprise, surprise, we have the same one in the other direction, right? You can send web socket data, curl WS send. So for sending web socket data to the server. And we also have this third one called curl WS meta, which is meant for when you receive data, and, and I'll show you in a second, when you receive data in a, in a callback, you can, call this function to get more details about that particular data that you're getting. Um, it, that particular function, uh, sorry, the, the curl WS meta returns information about, um, I have the slides in a funny order, but let's go with that. So when you set up data and you receive the data in the right callback, like you do with, you typically do with the downloading stuff with libcurl, right? You set up a right callback, that right callback gets called over and over when you get data from, from the network, right? So the right callback is bytes, 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 chunk, 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 how, you know, pretty much, well, depending on how, how big download it is, it could be endless or it could be a few bytes. You don't, we don't know. It's meant, you know, to deal with any size. So when you get that callback called, you can ask what, what about this data? What's, what, what does it mean? And then this, struct has information about that chunk of data that just arrived the chunk of websocket data so you get some flags here that are identifies the kind of data sort of if it's if it's text if it's binary if it's the last frame in a series and stuff like that and also which kind of offset and how many bytes there are left within this particular frame that you're getting um, and and exact size of this data chunk uh, i will uh, and so that th those are some of the flags i'm showing you be behind here below it's the word sorry uh, <clears throat> so that's uh, that's what you use this curl ws meta function for you get one of these informations back is this i think it's the wrong name here hmm, is it no i uh, sorry uh, uh, so websockets sends messages and this this is going to be a little bit complicated but but bear with me it's only friday afternoon so um we send messages with websocket right so here's the time frame so there's a little arrow here we send stuff in in sorry in, in that direction and so we send first one message and then we send another message so basically message one message two message three and we send messages over and over and over and each such message, this is a WebSocket message. They will sort of arrive in the other end. They can have a size, I mean, this could be a very small one. It could be a very, very big one. There's really no size limit in how big these can be. But each such message is split up into frames so that a WebSocket communication sends frames. Each frame belong to a message. So you basically say this frame is connected to another frame to another frame to another frame and end of end of message so you basically chain frames ch you, you as a websocket communicator you chain frames together and th they they sort of construct a message so in this case three frames one message right so the frame one and frame two they are not the final ones but frame three is the final frame for message one and not too complicated so but they, they of course don't have to be three frames you can just send one sometimes or often or who knows you send one frame and that frame is the entire message 
use just one frame, this is the message. So this is this is how WebSocket is defined to work. That's the RFC 6455. It says this is how WebSocket works, right? You send frames, they might be more frames until they're the end of message and then it's the last frame. Could be the first frame is the last frame. Then there's only one frame. But here, here's the thing. When when libcurl delivers data, it delivers fragments of frames. It doesn't deliver complete frames. It will deliver partial frames. So it could deliver fragment one, fragment two, they could be like that. Or it could be three fragments from one frame, or it could be one fragment for the entire frame. We don't know and we can't make assumptions. So um, you will get all kinds. And that's why you need that information when you get data. What kind of chunk did you get? How big is this fragment? Will I get more fragments? How much is it left until I have the full frame? Um, and then, of course, you can get st stuff like that, right? So everything is split up into many, many fragments. And this is how the libcurl API handles it. And the reason why we have made this little sort of complication, I will show you in a, in a second. First, I will just mention that the fragments here that are sent from libcurl, they are sort of aligned on frame boundaries. So you, all fragments are part of the same frame, right? So you, the, the, the fragments cannot overlap frames. So they, they build up a complete frame and then the next complete frame and then the next complete frame. And a series of frames could be an entire message. Pretty much, mm, well, th so there's going to be a chain or a series or a train or, or a whatever of fragments or sort of fragments as yes, construct so that create frames that are part of messages those layers and this uh, the reason for this the reason for this rather complicated approach is that these babies the frames in websocket the in the protocol defined by this spec they can be basically unlimitedly big right 2 to the power of 63 bytes large which you know that's <laughs> i don't know exactly how to say that size but it's so big so uh, it's really, <laughs> uh, yes, very, 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 very big. So it's it's possible that you could create a protocol that just sends one frame forever and ever for the rest of time, basically. Uh, so we cannot make the API assume anything about frames or frame sizes. We have to make the API work with what if you make a frame size that is, uh, you know, larger than any hard drive that exists on planet earth right so it's quite possible to do that so we need that's why we need to send fragments if you use a very big frame if you use a very small frame maybe we can get the entire frame in a single fragment we we don't know and and as a protocol bearer we need to support whatever the the users of this protocol or sort of designers of the both ends do right I, as a side note, I actually started out with a sort of a max frame size because I, in my silliness, thought that people would never use sizes above a certain size. So we could sort of simplify things, but it turned out to be a rather naive approach. So I had to scrap that. And now we support any size doing this approach. Usually when you have an, uh, an app that speaks WebSockets with the other side, you know what kind of data you have or assume and communicate with the other side, right? If you, if you write a TCP client, you know what kind of TCP you speak with the other side, right? You don't just get random data. You, you have some kind of um, agreement with the other side. So yes, these fragments are going to be smaller, much, much smaller than 2 to the power of 63. The exact size will matter and differ depending on things, depending on what kind of API you use and what kind of buffers you use. So typically in the in the order of uh, X number of kilobytes. <clears throat> so that said, before I get into how to use sort of the, the APIs, more function calls, look at the code thing, and how to set up a, a WebSocket communication. I, 
just want to briefly mention that there's a transparent mode as well. So since, I, as I mentioned, a lot of users are already, are already sort of piling or building applications using libcurl to set up something that is then talking WebSocket over that connection that libcurl set up. Um, it, for those kind of applications, you already have a WebSocket awareness. Your application already knows about WebSocket. Maybe you use a WebSocket library. You have written your own WebSocket implementation. So if you want to keep doing that and you want to build on top of this new WebSocket powers in libcurl, you can ask libcurl to just send me everything raw. Don't try to be clever. Don't try to interpret the data. Just send everything so that the application can then read and interpret and, and manage all that data um, by itself and then libcurl will deliver that to the application so basically you're saying i know websocket delivered everything to me and then libcurl will do that it, uh, and you just say please enable raw mode in this new curl opt uh, option um, and this of course assumes that the receiver do anyone who enables this knows WebSocket. It speaks WebSocket already. So I understand that this is a, this is this sort of is a rather niche thing. It's um, it's meant for those who already or who, whoever wants to build your own. You already have it. You you know better. You you want don't, you don't want to break your app because you already have some stuff. So then you can do this. Uh, for everyone else, you might want curl to speak WebSocket itself so that your application doesn't have to care about a lot of WebSocket details. So libcurl will do it for you. And then we have two different API models. And I, I will show you why. There are sort of ups and downs, cons and, pros, cons and pros with both, depending on your particular use case and how you anticipate to use WebSocket for, for your particular use case. Um, and, and since since the protocol is such open-ended setup, send whatever you want in both directions, it's hard for us to say which is the most popular one, right, or which is the best one. So um, these are two different approaches, and, and you go with the one you think works best for your approach. And the first one is the one that is most similar to how libcurl already works. It's the right callback style. So it's very similar to regular downloads. You, when you want to download something with libcurl, you do what? You, you provide the URL, you set up a right callback. Those are the sort of the two fundamental parts that you do when you want to do a libcurl transfer. And this set up a right callback, you can do this with uh, WebSocket as well. And it's very handy for uh, download-oriented WebSocket communications. A lot of WebSocket communications are download oriented in that maybe they're just spewing data to you every now and then. So very download centric sort of sure you set up the connection, it will send something to you every now and then. I've noticed that they often send JSON. So maybe it's just set up a connection, it sends JSON data to you every 10 seconds. So it's very so it's very easy then to just set up a right callback, have the right callback called with uh, WebSocket data every once in a while. It scales really nicely when you want to do a lot of parallel transfers, but maybe you want to do, you know, I want to do X amount of parallel WebSocket transfers. And this is a very convenient way to do that because it scales nicely and it makes it easy to write the kind of application. But maybe you don't have a download oriented WebSocket use. Maybe you have a more session thing you want to uh, you write a chat app, then it's not download centric, it's back and forth all the time. So then we have a separate style, separate model, and that's the connect only style. And in this case, if you want to speak WebSocket this way, you get a full receive send flexibility in that you get a connection set up and then sort of, then it's up to you to do whatever you want. Send data, receive data, you, you're in charge, you decide. and. Of course, that's much better for the non-download focused use cases. And then you really get a very, um, you get a setup that works better for a single use per thread. So basically you do, you probably use multi-threaded if you want to do multiple uh, parallel connections because um, of, of the API style. 
and I will show you um, uh, uh, two examples. Both of these are examples that already exist on the site and in, in Git, so you can go and look at these sort of live for real. You don't have to watch my slides. Well, you can you can watch my slides first, and then you can go to the code and, and sort of see for yourself or play around with them. Extend, build your own app maybe by extending the uh, the example. Who knows? So first, of course, I mean, I assume that you've seen or tried a little bit libcurl before. But first, you, of course, you create an easy handle with curl easy in it, just like you always do when you do a libcurl transfer. You set up a URL. In this case, we use the wss colon slash slash for saying that we want uh, secure web sockets, uh, web sockets over HTTPS. Um, yes, and then you set the right callback. This is the function call that will be called by libcurl for every piece of data that arrives to, uh, to us, right? And in this case, we also set the right data function pointer. Uh, so that it's not a function pointer, it's just a pointer. The right data is a custom pointer that will be passed to the callback. And in this case, you will see that we set the ESA handle itself as a pointer that to send to the callback. And uh, I will, you will see in a second why I opted to do it like this. That's of course a custom pointer, so libcurl will not sort of touch it, see it, understand it, or do anything. It will just pass that pointer to the callback and let the, and then the callback can decide what to do with it. And I will show you why why we want it. Uh, and then, of course, when you set up all those options, presumably you want some other options as well, maybe. Then you do the transfer. Curl is the perform, and it will do the entire transfer, of course, and it will call the callback for every incoming um, WebSocket data there is. Possibly, of course, this might be a very long transfer if it maybe it never ends, so it will never return from this. But who knows? Anyway, if it ends, this function will return. It will return an error code, blah, blah, blah. And when you're done, you call curl easy cleanup to clean up everything and you're done. That's sort of, you know, standard libcurl procedure, how to do it, transfer synchronously with libcurl. The, the callback in this case that gets all the data from the WebSocket data looks like this. Right, right CB has, has the callback and here's the key, right? So as you look at the first line in this function, it's it assigns the easy handle to to one from one of the arguments, right? So the fourth argument to this function is a void pointer. That's the custom pointer that I've set with the curl right data in in the third point to the left, right? So that's the right data pointer it gets passed in the fourth argument to the callback. So we get the easy handle into the callback. And by having the ESA handle in the callback, we can call curl ws meta meta, or whatever, how you want to pronounce it. Uh, and you get a curl ws frame struct pointer back. And that struct pointer points to a struct with information about that particular chunk of data that you just got from libcurl. It contains information about that particular fragment of data you just got. It's a part of a frame, right? So. The frame has a type, it has a length, it has an offset into a larger frame, maybe. So it has, that's the struct, I showed you the struct previously. So, um, <clears throat> And in this case, um, the function here that you're seeing, the right CB function, it doesn't actually do anything with the data, it just outputs it to standard R with, in hex, and then returns a proper value as I'm, I dealt with all the data, I'm fine, continue. By returning n items at the bottom of this function, um, it says to libcurl that everything is fine and libcurl will continue to transfer and you know keep calling this um, over and over. And yes, as pointed out, it lacks a line feed. <laughs> You should probably insert a line feed there before the return, otherwise it'll get all messed up. But that's sort of a ec good exercise for the reader. And as you can see, then the, the actual data that arrived comes in the pointer in the first argument, right? The B pointer here, that's the pointer to the data. 
and in the, in number seven here we check with kind of what kind of data it's binary or text WebSocket has this uh, type so you can actually you actually say if the data you send is text or binary and if it's text it's supposed to be utf8 curl doesn't check that or verify it in any way but it will deliver that type uh, information so that the application knows here's text here's or here's binary whatever to do about it is left for the application but the type is sort of set in the protocol so that will be delivered that information and right in the number eight here of course that's the return code i mentioned already you need to make sure that you return the same value that you got as input if you don't return the same value it will be uh, treated as an error and the transfer will be aborted so that's how you do it the the right callback style which is the most similar to existing transfer transfers how you do if you if you have a WebSocket server that just sends you data without you having to do much. Uh, this is an excellent way. You can actually, I didn't show you this in this, but in this right callback here on the right side, you can actually call curl ws send as well if you want to send the data. So if you sort of as a, if you want to act on something, oh, you got some special code in, in the incoming data, you can also send back data from within that callback if, if that is what you want. But if you're having another more of a back and forth setup, you want to have a session set up to do WebSockets, you have a different kind of, of model, then you do it like this. It starts out, of course, the same way. You create an easy handle. You always create an easy handle with curl, right, for every transfer. And you set the URL in, this, in the same style as I already showed you. WSS colon slash slash blah, blah, blah. That's to the host. And But then the then there's this significant change. You set the connect only option, curl opt connect only, to two. And it's a long value, so there, then that's the capital L there. And, and it's a little bit ugly to have that number two. I figure we should possibly provide a defined name in the future, but for now it's number two. And there's actually another meaning for number one. So. Uh, you should probably read up in the documentation exactly what this means and what to use. But if you want to go WebSockets with the connect only model of API use, you set number two there. So yeah, and what does this mean? It means that the, the transfer that you do then in, in uh, number four, the curly is a perform call, it will only set up the connection for you with WebSockets. It will sort of upgrade the connection for you, agree to everything, do the protocol switching and then you're done and then it returns okay we're done because it's done when it has set up everything to do web sockets but then it leaves the rest to you to your application in this case it checks if it failed it'll show an error code if it works it will call this sub function called uh, very creatively called web socket here in my case uh, and that particular function looks like this because um, um, it's okay bear with me it's a very simple example here but it sets up so you set up that WebSocket session and here we're going to do a little cycle uh, as you can see this function will loop 10 laps and for every lap it will try to read the data and then send a ping and then we'll receive a pong and then sleep two seconds and then do it again 10 times and then it will called the function web socket close and then it's done uh, and how do you do these other things that i'm showing here i will write so um if it fails it returns that's sort of what it shows and then there's a sleep and, and when it's done it will close the socket but anyway i, I wanted to show you then that so you when you want to ask libcurl if there's any incoming data that is web sockets so you just call the curl ws receive function provide a buffer and you provide a pointer in, in the last argument this is actually the fifth argument in the curl ws receive function call you provide a pointer to a pointer so you will get uh, information that there's there is again right the struct curl ws frame st struct you will get a pointer to such a struct with information about the data 
if you receive data from um, in this call so basically this will return a part of the data that might be incoming or the entire data but whatever if you have a bigger buffer you might get more data if you have a small buffer you might only get a partial data so basically then you can read whatever the server has sent to you that could be well whatever you have going with your server and it, so that's how you receive data right so it will return uh, as the fourth argument there you can see the rln argument that's the receive length that's the length of the data that you receive um, yeah and in this case it just it will return error if it fails somehow and if you want to send data as in the if you go up and check the number six below the number six there it does receive any and then it sends the ping it calls the ping function and now at the bottom we see the ping function implementation very basic i'm just showing you how a basic setup here but you would then use the curl ws send function pretty much send a payload and the size of the payload return number of bytes sent and there are some flags and you say that this is a ping packet and off you go and curl will then send this as a WebSocket message to the server so that's a ping and a pong and really uh, there is this concept in WebSockets called ping and pong uh, not too creatively set right but or, or named um, okay did I curl receive any yeah so the, so you can see that the, there's this is an example it's really uh, rather basic simple so it doesn't really do anything with the data it doesn't so it, it lacks error codes it lacks a few things so if you want to do something with this something real you you should actually extend it to do something real with the data and as you can see this receive function it doesn't actually do anything if it receives data it'll just throw it away and and that seems stupid because who, why would you would do that no you wouldn't do that this is just a basic example it's a skeleton something to build upon an, an embryo to show you a little bit how to do web sockets you you want to change it you want to improve it before you can consider it a, a proper example so anyway so I, I was talking about ping you know there's a lot of different protocols that do pings for certain kinds of things because you know this is a protocol uh, web sockets that i mean is a protocol to set up sessions maybe you have them long going you can set up a session going for for a long time and um you know firewalls and everything they will close idle connections so you don't want um, you don't want your things in between to close your idle connections just because you, you, well maybe no one said anything for a few minutes so therefore there's uh, this ping concept in the protocol so you have to um, one of the sites you have to sort of have some kind of traffic over the wire at some point in time to make sure that every middle box there between you and the server agree that th there's traffic here we shouldn't kill the connection so therefore there's this ping concept so you can either side can send the ping with some payload and the other side is then supposed to send the pong with the same payload and you know if they don't within a certain period of time something is wrong you can kill the connection and try new or something like that so libcurl then has an automatic ping responder so as soon as the server sends you a ping uh, and you have libsocket uh, websocket going with libcurl it will respond to the ping with a pong uh, appropriately but uh, it doesn't have anything that actually that does it the other way around so if you as a you write an implement, uh, implementation as a client and you want to have a ping going to the server you need to send that ping if you want to so maybe you want a time where you haven't received a ping in a long time um, send a ping and, and make sure that the server is still there because otherwise the connection might go down prematurely we might need to enhance that management somehow going forward but that this is how it works right now so um, that's also another area i could use your feedback if you get something going so basically i've written documentation so more, more or less everything i've said now today is documented in these different man pages i created this libcurl-ws 
just a few days ago. And then we have the different man pages for the new API calls that I've talked about. They're, they're also, I would say, pretty complete, so you should read them and, and figure out how they work. There are also these two examples that I showed you snippets from, WebSocket and WebSocket CB, CB for callback. So they, they used the two different API models. Uh, and they're really pretty bare bones. And as I said, they don't actually do a lot of things. So because since you can do pretty much anything over WebSocket, I, sort of, and I don't have a WebSocket server to run this really. So I, I well, if you can think of better examples or you want to ex enhance or expand our examples, please do that and, and provide PR. So we, I mean, the more the merrier. We can have more examples or better examples or anything. So really, this is how it works right now. And it it's a fairly solid API. You can do WebSockets with it. People have done it, used it. And we get occasional uh, bug reports and we worked on it. But we really, really need more feedback. And I especially uh, would like to get more positive feedback too. If it works for you, let us know. Because we need feedback to dare removing this experimental tag, right? So if we're ever going to ship this as not experimental, we need to know that it actually works and it's sort of at least for some kind of use cases. And until then, until that time when we remove the experimental tag, we have time and opportunity to polish the API. Right? So if, if, you, if any one of you ends up in a position where you think this is, API is really awkward or really bad, it doesn't really work for this kind of setup or blah, 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 then we either expand it, change it, tweak it, whatever, um, to make sure that we can actually support whatever we need to support. And it is also a good way to make sure that the API is decently convenient for that particular time when we sort of say that now we're done, carve this in stone, and now we will never change the API again uh, whenever that happens. Hopefully uh, at some point within this calendar year, right? And also we can discuss things and maybe we need to add some more API calls to do this really polished. Maybe we need a curl WS poll function to wait for activity on the uh, WebSocket connection because we don't have that. Right now you have to solve it differently. Or maybe that the different way is enough. So just basically just you have you can extract the socket and do select yourself uh, or poll on it. But maybe that is a little bit too, sort of clunky. There's also been this request to get a callback. When you do WebSockets the callback way, um, basically you don't get told until there is WebSocket data incoming. And then you can send data, but basically you have no opportunity to send data until you get data from the server. Maybe you want a way to get that opportunity. So someone asked for an, a callback, sort of when the connection is set up, tell me about it so I get that opportunity to send data first before data arrives. So I think it's a fair suggestion. So maybe you should work on that. And I'm keen on learning what kind of, what you think, if you have a use case, so how would it work? How would it be convenient for you? And of course we can talk about things, at least going forward. Should we support this for HTTP2? Makes sense, there's an RFC for how to do it. We support HTTP2 pretty good already. Uh, should be fairly straightforward API wise to get it sort of into everything. Um, then there's also this other, it's not really WebSocket, it's more WebSocket next generation, but it's the protocol called Web Transport. It's done over HP3 instead in Quick and uh, really the future of WebSockets maybe. Maybe we should consider that. People are sometimes proposing that, but uh, I'm not sure exactly where we, the world is there with that or, but anyway, that's a, a potential thing to discuss and, and work on for the future. And certainly we have room for improvement when it comes to command line tool enhancements because the command line tool really does not know much about WebSocket at all. You can use WebSockets with it and it will basically just hook it up to this callback based data. So if the server sends you data, the tool gets it and will sort of, you know, transfer it, download it, show it on the screen or download it to a file, but it's really very bare bones. And we might want to expand that to work better for more use cases, at least also sort of provide a way for the tool to send data back, maybe in a telnet style, maybe something else. So there's definitely room for improvement 
in a lot of areas here. But I want to I want to move this forward, and I want to do this in conjunction, sort of, with feedback and and learning what people actually get to work and and what doesn't work, so that we can sort of improve it in the right direction. So basically, this was what I wanted to tell you about uh, today when it comes to WebSocket with curl, and I tried to intercept my answer to a question I saw in chat. So is there anything else I should cover? Did I miss anything obvious? Any questions from the chat? Oops, how did I manage to do that? Uh, okay, I, w I wanted to do this and I wanted to just go back. So here, <laughs> so, so someone said show the medal. So I will do that. So th that's an excellent way for a WebSocket presentation, right? So I once, once got a medal. So I got the Polham Prize Award in 2017. And as part of that, I got this thing. And I actually, I always have this on my desk. It's a sort of an inspirational thing. So I have, this is a, um, I will show you, this is a, it's a gold medal. It's actually a gold coin like this. And it has, well, it's going to be impossible to show you, but it has my name here on this sort of, I don't think my, my cam can focus, but it has my name on the edge. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, it has this, this gold medal is the Polham Prize. Uh, it's called, the, and this guy on there is a Swedish engineer from the 1700s called Christopher Polham. So that's, um, that's the guy the prize is named after. So he was sort of, um, sometimes sort of called as the sort of the father father of Swedish uh, in, in maybe not engineering but he's sort of he he invented a lot of things and did a lot of mechanics and stuff like that it's a very old engineering award the first prize was awarded in 1878 I think so anyway it's kind of cool and I, it's really nice I have this in sort of my fine um, box gold medal box and not not the least i also have these ones this is the chocolate version of the same award much bigger ones uh, i've <laughs> have them for years they're probably not very tasty anymore uh, size comparison much bigger smaller but um, the gold one is much heavier than the chocolate one it's actually pretty heavy so this is i mean this is um, pure gold right so it's a uh, uh, this is about, I think it's about an ounce of gold or whatever. I think I measured it to about 30 grams or something. But it's, so it's, it doesn't sound much, but it's uh, sort of, it's much heavier than any regular coin would be in this size. So it's, I mean, you can't tell, of course, it's hard to talk about weight uh, like that, but still sort of this heavy nice feel so yeah that's uh, clearly very uh, web socket oriented stuff so um since that was really really um web socket this time i'm going to just say that this was web sockets with curl uh, on june 16 so i'm going to stop the recording right now <laughs>